air resistance and terminal velocity. When an object falls, gravity is pulling down on it, and so it's picking up speed. It's accelerating down due to gravity. But as it gains speed, air resistance becomes a factor. And you know that if something's moving faster, there's more air resistance, because you know if you stick your hand out the window of a car while you're driving along at 5 or 10 miles an hour, you just feel a little breeze. 5 or 10 miles an hour relative speed between your hand and the air. But if you're driving at 60 miles an hour and you stick your hand out the window, you feel a significant force on your hand. So air resistance becomes larger. The force due to the air resistance becomes larger at higher speeds. So imagine an object falling. It's picking up speed, but as it gains speed, the force of the air resistance becomes larger and larger. And that force tends to keep it from accelerating. Eventually, the object, if it falls far enough, it will pick up enough speed such that the force due to air resistance will keep it from getting any more speed. At that point, it has reached the maximum speed, and the force due to the air resistance at that point is equal to its weight, and the net force in that case is zero, and so it won't accelerate any more. At that point, it's said to be moving at terminal velocity. And by terminal, just think final. That's, its, uh, that's the, the, the final speed that it's going to reach. It's not going to get any more speed than that. And you might ask, well, how fast is that? How fast will something go if it falls? Well, it depends on the object. An object, uh, like, like we talked about a rock and a feather falling earlier, a feather just floating down has a very low terminal velocity because it, it very quickly reaches a point where the air resistance is enough to keep it from gaining any more speed. The, the relevant question might be, how fast would I fall? Or how fast would you fall if, if we jumped out of an airplane, say we're skydiving? Well, it depends. If you um, have your arms and legs spread out, like skydivers sometimes do. Then then you, you spread out such that you uh, expose a lot of your body to the oncoming air, the air that you're falling into. And that gives you more air resistance. And in that case, your terminal velocity is about 120 miles per hour. And skydivers usually do that because they are skydiving for fun and they want the ride to last a while so they spread their arms and legs out in a configuration that will make them go as slow as possible 120 miles per hour doesn't really sound slow but that's about as slow as a typical adult can go in free fall in the atmosphere now if you want to gain speed you could aim aim down kind of dive down tuck your arms and legs back such such that you're heading straight straight down really fast and in that um in that configuration or in that orientation you would get up to a speed of about 180 miles per hour and you can see that if you're nosing down like that you're exposing less area of yourself directly to the to the air now if you fall with a parachute The parachute is designed to have a very high drag. It's designed to catch a lot of air. And so you might be here, holding onto the parachute and, and falling down. Because the parachute has such a large area here to catch the air, it moves, it moves very slowly. The terminal velocity for a parachute is slow. And exactly how slow depends on the parachute. You can obviously land at a slow enough speed to not get hurt. If you hit the ground at these speeds, it would be fatal. But with the parachute, you can land and not get hurt. Um, modern parachutes can uh, are effective enough to allow a person to make a gentle landing standing up. Military parachutes tend to be smaller and they, you tend to fall much faster if you're in a military parachute. And there's a good reason for that. If you're jumping out of a plane and landing in enemy territory, you don't want to be hanging up there in the air very long where you're just hanging there and people can shoot at you. The enemy has got you in plain sight. There's no cover, no wall or anything you can hide behind. You're just floating there in the air. 
just a sitting duck basically so military parachutes are designed to get you down as fast as possible and they hit the ground really hard it's equivalent to jumping out of a second story window um, the impact speed and if they don't land just right they have a special procedure where they hit and roll and spread the impact out over a large area of their body and that allows them to hit without uh, without injury if they don't land correctly they could very easily have broken ankles broken legs so they land a special way to land at high speeds so exactly how fast you fall with a parachute depends on the type of parachute but in all of these cases you fall and you reach a speed that where, where you won't go any faster due to the air resistance and that's called the terminal velocity now the one point of confusion that some people have about this if you're falling at terminal velocity and the weight is equal to the force or the force of air resistance is equal to the weight those forces are equal and the net force is zero then why don't you stop some people ask if the net force is zero shouldn't you simply stop well the net force being zero doesn't mean that your velocity is zero it means that your acceleration is zero so the way to think about it is to imagine the whole process if you you uh, you jump out of the airplane and so here you are falling through the air at, at first right when you jump your speed downward is zero and so the air resistance is zero so then you start to fall you get up some speed and that causes a little bit of air resistance so because there's a little bit of air resistance you're not accelerating quite as fast but you're still accelerating so you gain some more speed and that causes a little bit more air resistance and that means you don't gain quite as much you're not accelerating at 9.8 anymore but you're still accelerating eventually you reach enough speed downward that the air resistance up doesn't let you gain any more speed it doesn't all of a sudden make you stop though so you gain speed until the air resistance is equivalent to the weight and at that point you simply don't gain any more you simply move at terminal velocity